might be wondering, what's a former stand-up comic doing in first class? Well, I have one word for you. Marketing. I mean, look at me. What do I know? I, I'm being flown first class to Hong Kong to do a 25-minute speech. And you can have this life because I have made so many mistakes. So many, I've wasted so much time, but I figured out the kind of marketing that got me gigs like this, and you can have it too. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to find your unique phrase to take your message and clean it down to a phrase that not only describes you, that not only makes you unique, but people are searching for. Hi, how are you? I'm this life too. I'm going to be talking today in this lesson about branding your message. This is your marketing promise statement. This is where we're going to turn the message of you formula into a powerful marketing plan that's going to get you gigs and get you income. So the first thing that you need is your marketing promise statement. And my guest today knows exactly how to do that. I'm so excited to have her. Uh, we're really lucky. She knows a lot about how to sell a speaker as she started as an agent representing speakers. So when several of the clients she represented quickly went from zero to 80 engagements per year, she became known as an influencer in the speaking industry. Now, for the past 10 years, Jane has run her own consulting business called Speaker Launch, where she coaches speakers to help position themselves in the marketplace and take their businesses to new levels. Jane's book, The Wealthy Speaker 2.0, has been called the go-to resource book for speakers at all levels, and her follow-up book, The Epic Keynote, Presentational Skills and Styles of Wealthy Speakers, have helped speakers increase their bookings and income. Yay! So please welcome Jane Atkinson. <laughs> Yay! Hi, Thank Jane. you, Judy. Thank you. It's so great to be here with you. Well, first, let's help people out. First, can you tell people what is a promise statement? You all have the message of you idea, okay? So you've developed the message of you. That's kind of a broad statement. And what we do is we take that and we tap it down to something small, five to seven words, and we're going to use that in your marketing so that when people come to your website or run across you in any particular place, boom, they're going to get it. They're going to understand exactly how you can help them. So a promise statement is a short and sweet statement. It's kind of like a tagline. It allows people to see immediately how you're going to help them solve their problem. People might refer to it sometimes as a you excuse me, a USP, unique selling proposition, or a tagline. It can often be similar to, say, a subtitle of a book as well. You know how the subtitle fills in the blanks of the how-to part? Yes, and that is so important because the reason for the subtitle title is marketing. So people go, oh, I'm somewhat interested in this topic, but now I'm really interested in it. And for those of you watching this right now, please note, if you haven't figured out the message review formula, you need to go through that course because the promise statement that we're going to work on right now has to be based on your credibility. You just can't right. make it up. Right, Jane? There are no shortcuts to this, right? No. You know, people have already taken from here something broad and they've you know, massaged it down to the message of you. So if you've done that though, great, that you've done the heavy lifting and now we're going to try to mold that into a nice marketing promise statement. So how can we use the marketing promise statement in, in our marketing? Well, in my world, the world of professional speakers, we really consider the website the first line of marketing offense. That's really the place that we think most clients are going to go first to see what we're up to, to understand how we're going to be able to help them. What are some mistakes people make in picking this phrase? Well, I think 
one of the biggest mistakes that I see is that people are really talking about themselves versus what the end user might be wanting as a benefit. So I, I go onto lots of speakers' websites, even in 20 you know, 16, I've been talking about this for 10 years, Judy, but I still see it a lot where it says, you know, kind of hire me, I'm a speaker. So, or the version of that is John Doe is an engaging, entertaining and thought provoker, thought provoking speaker. You want to use him at your blah, blah, blah. And so speaking often for uh, people in my world is just one of the ways that they distribute their knowledge. Like you and I, we have books, we have uh, coaching services, we have a university and online training programs, and we offer all different things. And speaking is just one of the ways that we actually distribute our knowledge. So therefore, on your on your uh, website, you really want to have a broad promise that helps to encompass all of those things. So why is it wrong to say, hey, John Doe is an engaging, thoughtful, inspiring speaker? Why is that wrong? Well, I think you do want to say that, but you probably want to keep that for a page that's like your speaking page. If John Doe offers consulting and offers uh, webinars and online training packages or, you know, there's all kinds of different things that John Doe could be offering, his promise wants to be broad enough and it speaks to the types of outcomes that he provides to the client. What we're really after is what problem are you helping to solve? solve. And that really is your message, right? So we talk about this in the message of you formula is that that speakers are hired and I know you work as a speaker agent and people came to you probably go, we're going through so many changes. Can you have a speaker help handle change? Um, right. And we're having a lot, our attrition rate is skyrocketed. People are, are right. the nurses are having burnout. We need someone to help give them some techniques to manage that. Here's a very simple one. It's not the most dynamic language, but turning managers into leaders, uh, leveraging talent for bottom line results, creating high energy, low stress workplaces. Mine is catapult your speaking business. Um, If you wanted to be specific about what you offer and who you offer it to, it might be something like creating customer longevity in your dental practice. So do you see the difference between that and hire me for your dental conference? I'll be a really engaging speaker. It's really more about the outcomes of your work all as a whole. So we want our promise statement to include results and maybe have it specific to the audience that we want to speak to. You might leave it or you might leave it broad and and just really speak without that, you know, that dental practice one. It could be creating customer longevity in your practice, creating customer longevity in your business. If they wanted to back it up because they want to speak to more than just dentists, then it's easy to do. Can you take me step by step on how someone creates this promise statement. Okay, well step one, we want to go through our message of you message and we want to drill it down to those five or seven words that we talked about and ask yourself, is this about them or is it about me? And if it's about me, then we want to try to make it more them oriented. And I really am all about that in all of our marketing. I just think it's a good practice to be speaking in outcomes rather than kind of me, me, me as, you know, you get tired of that. Okay, so that's step one is to drill it down. So you wanted to drill it down to your saying five to seven words, no more than seven words. Well, I've seen longer, but it, I, I just think that, and we've seen longer, you know, in uh, book subtitles, we've seen some subtitles getting pretty long these days. Uh, we're just giving you guidelines. And, you know, for everything we talk about, Judy, <laughs> there's an opposite, right? People in the entertainment business, for instance, if you are a straight up comedian or humorist or humor speaker, or let's say you're jugglers like the passing zone, you might just say, 
we're here to we're here to entertain you and that's perfectly okay and then it might be about you rather than about them so just so you know for every kind of rule we give you there's always an opposite and there's somebody out there doing it differently and they're probably doing just fine so but, we'll give you some guidelines you know what you're actually doing you're the haiku of the message of you <laughs> so you're taking the message of you ah. formula and making really a haiku poem out of it um well if we say to that to people i think they're gonna just roll their eyes and say who can come up with that please judy <laughs> but i love it that's it. that's what it is it's short and sweet absolutely and and the reason we need to do this is because people go to a website and do you know how long are do they look at a website 10 seconds i think that's being generous don't you 10 seconds in our quasi you know, attention deficit society, we go boom, boom, boom. I look at websites so quickly. My husband's always saying, slow down. What did you do there again? Slow down. And it's because we just move through things so fast. So we really have 10 seconds, maybe even less to impress people. So let's go to step two. Step two is... Step two is do your homework, do your research. Now, I know you had people do that as a part of creating their message of you formula. Love it. Google the speakers who are marketing the same type of topic as you. See what they're doing and do something different. Let's make sure, A, you're not taking anybody else's language, uh, and, and B, that you're coming at things from a totally unique perspective place and approach. That's what we want to do is we want to do our homework and see what's out there and then try to be unique so that you're not really duplicating everybody else's. I bet you also if you go out and do some research on other speakers, you will see how many are saying hire me, I'm a speaker. <laughs> and so you'll say, "Ooh, I have a little I have a little uh linchpin here. This is my step ahead of everybody else. I have a clear and defined promise statement." Woohoo for me. Another question on this researching speakers. If you find no one who's speaking on your topic, is there a problem with that as well? It could be. I mean, we definitely want to be the biggest fish in the smallest pond. However, it might be that nobody is really paying for this. So a part of your research will be to find out whether or not anybody's actually paying for this. So one of the things that you can do is you can go out on the Speakers Bureau websites and you will see fee ranges. So let's to pick a really broad topic of like leadership. Say you're a leadership speaker, you can go on to let speakinc.com, that's a speaking bureau on the West Coast, and you can search leadership speakers and you will see the pricing and I think it will give you a little lift to see that many of the leadership gurus are getting paid some pretty good dollars. So uh, that allows you to say, okay, then you're going to need to say, what aspect of leadership am I going to specialize in because there's a sea of leadership speakers out there. So you're going to have to be really clear on what brand of leadership you're going to offer. But then uh, if you went out to speaking.com and you did some research and you found out that there are no, there's not even a division or a category for you, well, then you may have to go back to the drawing board and find out whether or not anybody will actually pay for this. Yes, so that topic of the breeding habits of Siamese fighting fish might be not such a popular speaking topic. Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> All those. Um, I knew you had something up your sleeve for that one. <laughs> so, step three. Step three. What we want to do next in step three is we want to focus and we want to really check in on your promise statement and see is it focused on the outcomes of your work. If it is, you can check that box and kind of move on. Uh, really ask yourself, what problem am I helping to solve in this promise statement? What am I showing that I'm helping to solve? And another piece of research that you can do is actually take it out to some people who are potential buyers and say, A, does this sound like me? And B, would you lean in with curiosity if I was to deliver something like this to your, to your, um, 
audience, what we have to remember is that when we are doing that type of market research, we are never going to get 100% approval. So just remember and don't change on a dime every time somebody says, well, I really don't like that word. <laughs> okay, fine. Let's move along and see if we can get 50% buy-in. And if you get about 50%, then you might be ready to move on to the next step. So where do we find these people to test out our promise statement? Well, sometimes you'll have a neighbor who works in corporate and you, they might see a lot of things like this and, and they might have seen a lot of speakers. It could be, uh, you know, you might have these people right in your in, inner circle, friends, family, colleagues, people who work in corporate are because oftentimes we're talking about going after the corporate dollars when we're looking to get paid for speaking. So that's where you want to do your research. You might call up a company and say, hey, I'm just doing some research. Uh, I have this new sales talk. You might call the VP of sales office and speak to the gatekeeper there and say, hey, I'm, I'm just trying to do a little market research. Would you mind telling me you know, whether or not this topic would be of interest. And they might say, well, based on what I know from my 20 years of sitting at this desk, yes, it is or no, it isn't. Or let me ask my boss and, and I'll let you know. I would imagine HR is, is also a good place to ask because everything goes by them. You know, people in my industry have always kind of poo-pooed talking to HR because they felt like they didn't have enough clout in the industry. But... Uh, I have clients who have built their whole businesses on the back of SHRM, which is the Society for Human Resource Managers, and they've done incredibly well. That's led them into tons and tons of corporate work. So I actually think that HR is a great place to, especially if you're uh, delivering a topic like how to engage your workers. You know, we know that the statistics are very high for disengagement in corporate America. If you can solve that problem, I think that that's something that they'll be really interested. All right, so let's go to our final step, step four. Okay, so step four is called the word swap. We want to analyze each word in your statement and ask yourself, could you do better? So when I first started my, my business, for instance, I might have had a promise that was, you know, build your speaking business. So I took a look at build and I thought, oh, can I do better than that? Maybe we put in the word catapult. So catapult your speaking business. It's, it's not the most interesting promise in the world, but at least it has an action word there that is kind of interesting. So let me share a few more kind of interesting words that you might be able to use. Uh, it could be leverage. Leveraging, it could be maximizing, developing, enhancing, catapulting, soaring, intensifying, boosting, building, helping, impacting, creating, inspiring, transforming. There's all kinds of words you want to look at and say, okay, can I do better than that word? And you'll be analyzing every part of your uh, promise and really looking for uh, a juicier word. If you think you've got kind of a ah -ha, ho -ham, vanilla word, then you might want to put in something a little bit more colorful. So in summary, we have step one, go through the message of you formula and haiku it, drill it down to five to seven words and <laughs> yes. ask yourself, is this about them? Step two, research Google speakers who are marketing on the same topic and see if you're unique in your approach or you're doing the same old, same old. Step three, focus. Check in on your promise and see if it's focused on the outcome of your work, the results. And step four, word swap. Swap out any words that are not interesting for more colorful language. And as you say, don't be vanilla. I understand now how important this phrase is. It's going on every page of my website. It's going on my business cards. It's going to be on my blog. It's going to be in my logo. It's going to be everywhere. Did I do it right? So tell me about how you privately consult with people because we're going to be offering our students at the Message U uh, University your services. Can you just tell me a little bit how you do your coaching? 
Sure. Well, I have a, a first session, kind of an introductory session that people have with me. It's called a Focus 40. It's 40 minutes by phone or by Skype, just having a conversation kind of like we're doing here. And we have an assessment that we have you fill out ahead of time that gives me a snapshot of what's going on in your business right now. And I get an idea of how we're going to direct the call. Typically, we'll ask the question, what do you most want to get out of that first 40 minutes together? and make sure that we hone in on that first. So in order to get started, you can book your Focus 40 session and we have an assessment that you can do as a part of that which will come after you've booked it. But if somebody wants to do something even more preliminary than that, we're going to provide a link to our Wealthy Speaker Audit, which you can put on the website, Judy, and people can download that immediately. It'll give them a really great snapshot of where they are, and then we'll decide, do they go into the Focus 40 as a secondary step? Fantastic. So click on the button, book some time with Jane. I know I did and got a lot out of it. And thank you so much, for Jane, for giving us the basics of how to really have a strong marketing promise statement.